With your victory over cowardice, you start back at the beginning. With every loop, with every cycle, you get stronger. You become more capable. And this time, you found some loot in the wagon. It appears that your past self can send forward some items for the future to use. A useful benefit. But as you prepare to ride, you contemplate something you have dared not do before. Those flickering blue flames that seem to drain the hope. Perhaps it's time to face them as well. To continue to ride forward. But first, the crossroads and your next set of companions. Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Loki Orin, and we're back at it in Darkest Dungeon 2, taking out a new named formation. Uh, and this one, uh, this, this was requested by somebody, and unfortunately, I have lost the record of who requested it. So I am very sorry uh, to whomever did request this, but we will be taking it out regardless. This is... The Crimson Court. Uh, no doubt based because there's there is, well, there's there's some bleeding here, but not as much as I would think. I wonder what. Hmm. I'm not sure. Comment section below. Why is this called the Crimson Court? I mean, the the leper is a king, and he does have like a court gesture, a wizard, and I guess a priest. But it's like the corrupted version, maybe. I don't know. Interesting questions. Anyway, we've got Alhazred, our long-running warlock here. Um, last gaffs, lightning reflexes. Um, I mean, warlock just seems good. Like warlock's just doing it for me. Do I want to? Do I want to swap it? it? Could go. We're not. We're definitely not an aspirant. Um, we're really not in position to do that. So it's really warlock or ritualist. And I think we'll just stick with uh, we'll just stick with Warlock. I'm just gonna we're just gonna keep the Warlock Alhazred. Next up, Sarmenti, our field surgeon uh, jester. He is currently listed as a virtuoso, which is frankly just you know jester, but better. It's it, yeah, that literally it's n affected skills none because this is just jester but better. Uh, we could look to do. A soloist or an intermezzo? Um, I do like the idea of soloist here. So if we go soloist, now we're doing slice off has bleed, yeah, has extra bleed resistance piercing. And we could be solo finaleing. Because, well... B blank desktop, our long-running flagellant, doesn't want to move that much. Leper really doesn't want to be moving very much, so maybe not. Maybe this isn't the formation. Um, could go intermezzo instead. So this causes uh, extra action bleed. Just every everything causes bleed, basically, is what this comes down to. Nah, you know what? If we're taking out a um. If we're taking out an infernal flame, I'm gonna I'm gonna play serious. We're gonna take a virtuoso. Um, examine it is just really my favorite. Uh, is it scourge that's just straight healing? Just could go like, could go and examine it. Just kind of focus on being a tank. Scourge the same way. Just kind of tank up. Maniac just isn't. I don't think Maniac's gonna do it for me. So it's examine it or uh, it's examine it or scourge here. Sepsis, Deathless, Lashes, Gift. Yeah, let's get Deathless. Deathless is just really stupidly good with Scourge. All that extra healing. And he continues to do bleed. Like, it is it is kind of creeping into the realm of, like, flagellant but better. Versus examine it where we're just, we're letting ourselves get low. 
But when we're at low health, we're dealing more. We will have access to combo. Both options, both options seem viable here. Um, we did examine it last time. We'll do Scourge this time. That seems reasonable to me. And finally, Baldwin, our Wanderer. He is Sanguine. That's nice. Uh, we haven't locked in a memory on him, so he is, he's coming in blank. But uh, do we want to just be... I mean, we could be a Tempest. Be a Poet. So it's, what is this, 7.15, yeah, Poet. Poet becomes, it's 5.9, so it's a lot less, but he's uh, Hugh, Chop, Break, Bash, Solemnity. Heals for even more. It, he doesn't need it. Um, Monarch is also kind of cute. We played with Monarch for quite a while. I haven't played with Tempest in some time. Oh, we can reroll Quirks now. Well, I don't really feel compelled to do that. This is actually a fine, uh, fine configuration here. So how would we set this up? Also, just Wanderer is probably fine, too. Plus seven damage when in cosmic. Okay. So that's how they're doing that. Hmm. Could go monarch again. I haven't taken out a poet in quite some time though. Or if or ever potentially. We have some damage coming from elsewhere. This would be super tanky, but that's also kind of bumping up against what our uh, what our flagellant wants to be doing. Uh, you know what? I have liked Monarch in the past. Because you just go hue. Maybe we don't need to withstand, but we do intimidate. Yeah, withstand's pretty good. Do something like this. That seems pretty decent. Makes it a long escort quest. Ah, uh, you know what? Let's let's get some big boy numbers out here. I haven't I don't think I've done a uh I don't think I've done a Tempest run in five ever. So let's do uh, let's do something like this. Maybe Bash. Bash seems kind of fun. And let's let's take out a Tempest and like you know I think we've got we've got some we've got a decent amount of healing here. We are bringing a Scourge, so the healing is going to be there. So yeah, this is the Crimson Court. Let's just let's get into it. We're I'm done I'm done waiting around. Just going to quickly blitz through this, but of course we do have to talk about this formation as a formation. Uh, we'll do our, we'll, as always, we'll start with our Iron Triangle here. Health, stress, damage. Uh, where I want to begin, I think, is stress. Uh, this formation has a very strong stress, or a very strong resilience to stress. Uh, Baldwin, the leper, is stress healing himself. He is more or less self-sufficient. Oh, this is not the, uh... Heh, this is not the, uh... This is not the setup I intend for the Jester, but we'll fix that later. I don't think I fixed uh, you either, did I? But, uh, so Baldwin's healing, stress healing himself. The, uh, Flagellant does not truthfully care about his own stress. He just doesn't, he doesn't really care. Um, 
So he's he's unbothered. Um, Alhazred doesn't really contribute anything to it, but the Jester is the best spike stress healer in the game. He does more stress healing than anybody else. So, yeah, very strong stress healing. Um, from a healing perspective, I think this team is equally strong. Very Two very strong points here. Um, the Flagellant and Alhazred combine to give you just ample healing uh, targeted throughout uh, whichever version of the Flagellant you're running. Uh, but I do think that the uh, Scourge Flagellant especially is really just capable of, like, just keeping the party alive. He could not care uh i mean it's primarily deathless but he he is quite good at keeping himself and the party alive and finally damage it'll vary a little bit depending upon which um which version of the uh which version of the uh the leper you're running but you will have ample damage output at all times so overall, I think this is just a very strong, robust formation. Frankly, um, this formation probably should be going against a harder boss. But, you know, I w it was requested and I'm excited to do it. Plus, I do think it's uh, it'd be nice to come in with uh, something that uh, I think is going to just rip and tear through here. Um, I do think this could be a Pliskin run. Yeah, this feels like a Pliskin run because we already have the... Um, we already have the medical equipment, so this is just going to give us enormous amounts of healing extra. So we really aren't going to have to think about healing. All right. Pick a frame. The Fragile Flame. The Despairing Flame. All right, so it's not this one. It's not the Hateful Pyre, purely because we, we've already kind of entered into getting Traveling Heal. So, let's see. The Killer's Glow on Killing Blow, Adlies take one stress damage. This could be fun. We are pretty good at dealing with stress. Star of the Chosen might not be not might not be terrible either. Generating that combo. This actually seems like I mean this is rated as a five a four flame one, but like round start, random a hero and enemy combo, like that actually works quite a bit with our formation. You know what? Yeah. Let's do the Star of the Chosen. This is definitely uh Definitely seems like one of the harder, uh, the harder flames, but uh, we're we're gonna do it. We are gonna go for it. All right, so let's uh, let's focus up. We're definitely gonna want to buy this food. Holy shit, we're gonna need this food. We're definitely gonna want want that clarifying poultice, a wind chime or a stew pot. Stew pot is actually pretty big for us. Stew pot comes along as well. Um. Do we have any really bad negative quirks? Darkly curious, thin blooded, thin blooded, fanatic fearing, squeamish, thanatophobic. Well, thanatophobic, we'd kind of like gone, but none of the rest of those are particularly impactful. You're never going to be first in the torn order, so I can safely go there. Alrighty. Does any of this help me? Not really, but well, put it in somewhere. May as well may as well not have it taking up spaces in our wagon, I suppose. Uh, we don't need calming incense. Where are we going, first of all? Uh, malaise, naked and afraid, anti-commerce, avoid the hooter, lots of academics caches, you say. That seems that seems pretty good. Lots of academics caches is good. Uh, this formation does do fine against the Dreaming General. I think it also does fine against the, um, the Librarian. So I think we'll be we'll be good either way here. 
We'll just gear up. I guess this means blank desktop can have that. We will save that. Save the rest of these for uh, the next the next zone. And uh, buy the warhorn as a panic button, maybe. Probably over this thing. Yeah. All right, five mastery points to spend. So this is definitely definitely relevant here. Oh wait, let me get skills set up here. You are a warlock again, but you are rank four this time. And you're not as likely to be up. So probably that, that, that. Because you're just going to be making those and you're going to get those. So that, 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 that maybe? Mmm. Ooh, this also, this also puts combo on those. So maybe it's this. That seems good. Virtuoso, you're just going to kind of be sitting in the middle. Probably want slice off and harvest. Let's go, let's go Razor's Wit, Fade to Black, Slice Off, Inspiring Tune, Harvest. That seems kind of good. Yeah, that seems like that'll be plenty. We could be Encoring, but I don't think we need to. Fester, we don't really need. Lash's Gift, nah. Endure, don't need it, but we do have that Stress Heal option if we need it. Necrosis, eh. That's, I mean, that's not terrible, but I don't think it's uh, what we're doing. I think that's fine. I think you're set up, too. You're just going to be... We're just we're just big boy in it. Just gonna, We're just shouting big boys and going in. All right, so that there there's our skill set up. Um, well, let's get chop upgraded. Chop upgrade is always good. Um, let's get binding shadows upgraded, because that's always good. Spiring tune and... Um, Aspiring Tune for sure. Give our Deathless its upgrade and uh, Reign of Blight maybe. That seems good. I mean, we're going to ultimately upgrade a lot of skills. Uh, this is a denial run. But alright, that'll do it. So we are taking out the Star of the Chosen. Uh, I like the look of this. I'm very excited to see how this plays. This is my first Infernal Flame run ever, so please be gentle. But I think we're set up for success, so thank you all for watching. I hope, uh, I hope you enjoy this run. Till next time, see ya!